The next paper is the Lexcell Radio Surgery Award winning paper, A Systematic Analysis of Hearing and Facial Outcomes After Gamma Knife Radio Surgery for Vestibular Schwannoma. Dr. Yang and colleagues and Dr. Bill Friedman will discuss this paper. Okay. Good afternoon. I'd like to thank the uh, American Association of Neurological Sec uh, Surgery and the Section on Joint uh, Tumors for uh, the LEXO Award and for giving me this opportunity to present our systematic analysis of hearing and facial outcomes after gamma knife radio surgery for vestibular schwannoma. Gamma knife radio surgery, since its, since its inception, has established itself as now a a safe and practical alternative to uh, microsurgical resection as well as an adjuvant to microsurgical resection for vestibular schwannoma. Most studies to date, though, as noted by our previous speakers, uh, are frequently from single institutions and are statistically underpowered to make broad statements about uh, facial nerve and hearing outcomes given gamma knife uh, radiosurgery for vestibular schwannoma. And despite fact that the literature is indeed chock full of papers, uh, the published data um, predicting hearing preservation and facial nerve outcomes uh, can be problematic. So what does indeed the literature say? And there are wide variations that are uh, uh, sur surprising uh, given the chock full uh, data that there is indeed on hearing preservation and facial nerve function. And furthermore, there are inconsistent methods in how to assess preservation and facial nerve outcomes uh, in, in different ways, different audiograms and different classifications. Our review of the literature indicated that there is a significant variance with how well hearing is preserved and how a facial nerve outcome is assessed. And most of the modern and recent literature indicates that hearing preservation is somewhere between 50 and 100 percent for both hearing preservation and facial nerve uh, after uh, gamma knife phrase of surgery for vestibular schwannoma. So our study and our systematic uh, analysis was to review uh, the English literature to assess uh, the gamma knife uh, radio surgery experiment, experience for vestibular schwannoma. We conducted a PubMed search using the terms gamma knife radio surgery, acoustic neuroma, vestibular schwannoma, hearing preservation, hearing, facial nerve function, facial nerve preservation. We use these terms alone and in combination. And this result, it resulted in over 254 papers and essentially also looking at all the references in these papers resulted in 50, over 50,000 patients uh, from whom all quantifiable and all accessible data were then disaggregated to be analyzed for this study. Given that this was a systematic review, the inclusion criteria were very important. And the specific inclusion criteria for this paper was principally that hearing preservation and facial outcome had to be specifically reported for patients who were treated with gamma knife radio surgery for vestibular schwannoma. Similarly, the, because of the wide variance in different ways and methods of assessing hearing preservation, uh, we used the otolaryngology, uh, head and neck surgery, and the Gardner-Robertson classification that only papers reporting hearing preservation with these scales were used. For the facial nerve outcomes, we used the House-Brackman scale to assess the uh, facial nerve outcomes in these papers up to and including the year of this analysis, which was 2008, were used for this systematic review. The exclusion criteria for this analysis were reports of insufficient treatment data, limited clinical data, or non-existent follow-up data, which excluded those patients from being analyzed in our report. Our definition for hearing preservation and facial nerve function was an otolaryngology and head and neck surgery class A or B, or Gardner-Robertson 1 or 2. Likewise, a house Brackman 1 or 2 at their last follow-up visit were defined as preservation in this analysis. Furthermore, all patients with vestibular schwannomas who were treated with recent microsurgery were also excluded. There was uh, multiple articles by the same center that reported the same patient from different time frames. And so in order to limit the redundancy, when we could discern uh, a certain center's patients were reported twice, we only in order to limit this redundancy in data. With this inclusion and exclusion criteria, we had a total of 6,438 patients in this analysis. Overall, the rate of hearing preservation, uh, when weighted according to the number of patients in each 
report was approximately 51 percent and 96 percent for facial nerve preservation. The average length of follow-up for this study was approximately four years, and the average radiation dose in, in all the papers was approximately 14.1 gray. There was a trend in the more modern series towards lower radiosurgery doses. Specifically, our results indicated several uh, statistically significant associations. First, looking at gamma knife radiosurgery based on dose, we found that the patients who were treated with 13 gray or less were significantly associated with improved hearing preservation. Here you can see uh, a 61% uh, versus a 0.4%, and the p value for this was 0 0.0005. In terms of facial nerve, we found that radiosurgery dose was also important for facial nerve uh, preservation. We found that patients who were treated with 13 gray uh, or less had a statistically significant correlation with improved facial nerve preservation. We also looked at uh, tumor volume and tumor size. Interestingly, we did not find a significant association with tumor volume and hearing preservation. That with uh, larger tumors of greater than 1.5 centimeters in the reported literature did not have a significant, uh, statistically significant association with worse hearing preservation. The p-value for this was 0 0.8968. Conversely, for facial nerve preservation, though, uh, we did find a significant association that smaller tumors were associated with improved rates of facial nerve preservation. That uh, tumors that were smaller than 1.5 centimeters cubes uh, were associated with improved uh, facial nerve preservation. The only association there we also uh, analyzed with that was that these smaller tumors with improved facial nerve preservation also had lower rates of uh, radiosurgery dosage of uh, 13.7 uh, gray versus 12.9 gray, and that this lower radiosurgery dose also may have contributed to the fact that their facial nerve function was better after surgery as well. The last variable that we also analyzed was age, and we looked at patients, uh, elderly patients versus younger patients, and for the hearing preservation, uh, interestingly, we found a trend towards actually better hearing preservation in older patients who were treated with gamma knife radiosurgery uh, for vestibular schwannoma, but this was not a statistically significant uh, association and just a trend uh, to improve hearing preservation. Conversely, we found that older patients treated with uh, gamma knife radiosurgery had worse outcomes for facial nerve preservation, uh, that these patients uh, had a significant association with a, a decreased rate of facial nerve preservation. Another note of finding is that we found that older patients who were treated with the higher rate of radiosurgery of greater than 13 gray did worse than younger patients also treated with that same higher radiosurgery dose of greater than 13 gray, that their uh, facial nerve preservation uh, was also uh, significantly worse. The statistical analysis uh, for this systematic review, uh, specifically we were comparing uh, se these several groups using the Fisher exact chi-square test and unpaired t-test, but in order to limit the bias that's uh, inherent in any study and to limit our own bias, we wanted to ask, well, maybe the modern series and the newer papers, uh, maybe they were associated with an improved hearing or facial nerve preservation, and maybe that length of follow-up uh, was associated. We did these analyses, and we found that the length of follow-up and the modern series actually did not uh, surprisingly show an improved uh, rate of hearing preservation or facial nerve outcomes uh, in the and here specifically, this is the correlation of hearing preservation uh, versus length of follow-up. And the uh, p-value here is 0 0.451, uh, indicating that the length of follow-up and the more modern series of papers were not correlated uh, with the uh, improvement, uh, with, with not, were not correlated with an improvement in hearing preservation or facial nerve outcomes. We hope to make a significant contr uh, contribution to the literature by aggregating this database of at all the published literature and hoping to minimize the effect of bias from individual institutions and also diluting the inherent error in any given single study. We also hope to conclude this with expansive results with multiple institutions and multiple patients in order to gain the difficult statistical power in order to make uh, an objective summary of the published data. We hope that this was an uh, objective and a critical analysis of the accurate overall hearing and facial nerve outcomes and highlighting key prognostic characteristics for patients treated with vestibular schwannoma with great gamma knife radiosurgery. 
Inherently, there are limitations of a systematic review. This was a retrospective study, so prospective time actuarial data was not able to be assessed in this analysis. Furthermore, a systematic review is only as good as its contributing paper, so we were depending on the published papers in the literature. But we think that this systematic review does indeed highlight critical prognostic factors that must be considered in patients treated with vestibular schwannoma. In our conclusions, our comprehensive systematic analysis suggests that radiosurgery dose is an important prognostic factor for both hearing preservation and facial nerve function. Thirteen gray or less of radiosurgery dose appears to have a statistically significant association with improved hearing and facial nerve outcomes. Patient age and tumor size must be considered as important variables to be considered and evaluated when evaluating a patient for vestibular schwannoma gamma knife surgery treatment. I'd like to thank UCSF for a clinical scientist training grant for funding this research, my mentor Andrew Parsa for supporting me, the other members of our lab and our collaborators for supporting my research. Thank you. This paper will be discussed again by Dr. Friedman. Dr. Yang and his colleagues have presented an excellent meta-analysis of the literature concerning the effectiveness of radiosurgery in preserving facial nerve and cochlear nerve function. As he has indicated, because it is basically a literature review, it cannot answer some questions. It cannot provide actuarial rates of facial nerve and hearing function. It cannot provide details of dosimetry and how those factors might be important in either facial nerve or cochlear nerve preservation. For example, cochlear dose may be important. It cannot provide information about tumor shape as opposed to tumor size. Our intracanalicular tumors that are tightly packed into the canal and are closer to the cochlea, more difficult to treat in terms of hearing preservation. And there may be other potential patient factors other than age that could bear on this analysis. And, of course, it depends on the quality of the papers that are analyzed, and we all know that good results tend to be published and bad results don't tend to be published. Nonetheless, I believe that this is a very valuable contribution to the literature, and it provides strong support for the contention that radiosurgery is the treatment of choice for small vestibular schwannomas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.